Why, hello there. Welcome to Outside Perspective. I'm your host, Adam. On today's episode, I have Kyle Brown. Uh, He's one of the guys from Jumbo Superfoods. And guys, let me tell you, their products are amazing. Uh, I met Kyle in Austin at the Paleo FX conference. That was an awesome experience. Uh, that was actually back in April, but a lot of uh, a lot of cool things to check out there. Anyway, I stopped at his booth and uh, spoke with him a little bit, checked out their products, and man, they are great. I got a muscle bomb, um, which I still use their muscle bomb, and it is amazing. It makes my fingers feel awesome. Um, with jujitsu, a lot of the gripping, it can hurt your hands. So I use that on my fingers. I'll use it just kind of wherever there's pain, you can use it. And it's amazing. Um, I use their CBD spray. I put it in my coffee. Tastes phenomenal. Um, so again, I'm not paid to say any of this. I just, I use their products. I think they're amazing. Um, and we'll talk more about their products, but I at least just got to give them their plug because it's some of the best, if not the best quality, for sure. They, they're using all um, all high-quality product or ingredients in, in all of their products. So check them out, um, jombosuperfoods.com. At checkout, use Jombo Loves You, and you get 15% off. And again, we'll mention that in the podcast, and I'll put it in the show notes. But I definitely just want to make you aware of their products. They're, they're a great company. Uh, anyway, back to my guest. So... Kyle Brown, uh, he is, according to his Instagram, he is a doer of things, a sparkling water aficionado, and a cookie connoisseur. So he's just an amazing human being. I had a really great time talking to him. It was an extremely fortuitous event. Uh, He just happened to be in St. Louis uh, visiting uh, not too long after I had met him in Austin, so... It was just kind of everything, just the stars just aligned, and I really enjoy sitting down speaking with him. So without any further ado, here we go. And we're going. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to Outside Perspective. I'm Adam, and I'm joined with with my buddy here, Kyle. Um, What's up, man? How's it going? It's good to see you, man. It's going well here in St. Louis, uh, visiting home, one of the homes Former yeah. home. Dude, yeah, man. Um, we were talking a little bit before, and, and you've been bouncing around, dude. Um, let's let's dive into that a little bit. Um, so you're from St. Louis originally? Yep, originally from St. Louis, and I, that's where I was born here. All, a lot of my family is here. Um, when I, uh, I left St. Louis when I was seven, so I moved to Oregon. Literally took almost the Oregon Trail to get out there. Yeah. So went, landed on the Oregon coast in a town called Florence. Lived there till I was 18. Moved to Eugene, Oregon, which is like a university town where mm-hmm. the University of Oregon's at, the Oregon Ducks. Um, went to school there for four years. And then after that, moved down to Los Angeles where started doing a bunch of crazy stuff, yeah. including How We Met You, which was one of our projects. And now the business is Jumbo Superfoods. Right. And uh, yeah, that's how we were introduced together. Right, yeah, and uh, so for the listeners, um, met Kyle um, back in, I believe it was April, um, down in Austin, Texas. Um, I had went down there to check out um, Paleo FX, which is an awesome expo, um, and on it, um, the company, they had a, a jiu-jitsu tournament, so I was like, man, I get to go learn some cool-ass shit, and do jiu-jitsu is the perfect combination, and as fate would have it, you know, I, I'm a big believer in the universe, dude. And um, I really believe the energy you put out is the energy that returns to you, and mm-hmm. it just really worked out. Um, came across you, we were talking, and dude, just the stars just aligned. Absolutely. And then, like for your listeners who don't know, the Paleo FX is the world's largest paleo convention. It's been going for about six years, I believe, in Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger every year. And like this year, they had on its uh, jujitsu tournament that you were able to pr- participate in, and. Um, at, for being at this convention for the last four or five years, that was a great value add. It was fun for um, the vendors and the companies to watch you guys kick some ass. And um, I know that it was fun for you guys. And it's great that Onnit was able to put that on and 10th Planet, since they're kind of brother-sister with that. It's been a really fun time watching that and 
watching the show evolve. Yeah, so I bet that um, that really brought kind of a maybe a little bit of a different crowd than some of the past years. Um, I mean, I know that you probably got a lot of the regulars, but I don't know. I mean, th- this was the first year that Onnit had that tournament there, right? Yeah, this was the first year Onnit had the tournament there, and I would say, yeah, you're right. It did bring a slightly different crowd. However, I would say most of the jiu-jitsu crowd, specifically maybe in uh, Austin, Texas, it follows like the paleo-ish mm-hmm. diet, which just means um, whole foods, low grains, no yeah. low carbs, m- something that m- from other earth. <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah. it was really awesome. I would say that the companies that do participate at Paleo FX, they are um, both great for synergy for people that kick ass. Yeah. So good, but she good. <laughs> put good shit in your body and then go kick some ass yeah dude it's that simple dude i mean and in austin dude that city is just so awesome um obviously we we're talking a little bit about before uh, we started recording but just the whole vibe of that city man it's just um I, like i said i'm a hippie and just it's just all good vibes man it's just um everybody's just real active you got scooters everywhere and bikes and you walk and yeah. There's just tons of shit to do. The Texas charm is very much alive. Everyone saying hello, greeting you, opening doors for strangers. It's like, so I'm being from Oregon. It's very comparable to Portland. However, Portland has a smug about it that I, yeah. and I, like my heart of hearts believes it's because it's so rainy and never sunny up there that people are more like, huh. Yeah. And in Austin, Texas, they have not only the sunshine, but great barbecue and great people. So, Hopefully they're smiling and greeting yeah. everybody, so you can see that Texas love down there for sure. Dude. Yeah, I think uh, I think the weather really does make a big difference, dude. It's like um, you you have all that overcast. Um, I mean, I've never been to Oregon, but yeah, from what I understand, that you know, there's just a lot of clouds. If you're not getting that vitamin C, dude. Maybe you just get a little grumpy. Yeah, that's it's it's kind of like I have a th- on my own theory about it because I moved to Cal or moved to Oregon being six, and I was a um, what I like to refer to as a husky youth, for <laughs> sure. Um, I blossomed into obese, for sure, being in, or- in Oregon. I was very athletic, did all of the sports, all of the things, but you couldn't go outside for about 10 months of the year. So the gloom, the nastiness to where I actually was lucky enough, as I left Oregon in 2011, I was 335 pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, and then for your listeners who can't see me here, I'm a 190 pounds right now. Dude, so, you look fantastic. Thank you. And I do believe it was b- the sunshine and being able to be active and go out and go ride my bike whenever I wanted to or go hike a mountain and just smile. And then the vitamin D, like you're saying, is just a great thing to get from the sun. And when you're not getting it in Oregon, you may be getting depressed and then the de- depression can lead to overeating or maybe that was just my expression of it. So, yeah, dude. I mean, if you're, if you're stuck inside all day and, um, and, and we know that, um, you know, vitamin D is just such a, such an essential nutrient, um, that we need. So, you know, yeah, that could totally lead to, to overeating and, before you know it, man, you're just all all pale and and feeling like shit. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And I don't know if anything like me, but um, dude, some foods are just trigger foods, dude. I fucking go crazy. Mm-hmm. Like I can't keep them in the house. Like I can't have ice cream in the house. Yep. I go I'll go crazy. I'll eat the whole thing. For sure. There I still there's something that I battle with is I would it's a great thing to call it like a trigger food where yeah. Ice cream is a single serving, no matter what size it is. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> as well as cookies. They don't necessarily stay in my house. And if they do, it's not for long. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I just kind of, it's better to, you know, if it is a temptation, just don't tempt yourself with it if you know that you're not going to do it. And they're like, luckily now, since our we've grown up, uh, there are healthy options for mm-hmm. things like that, like dairy-free ice cream or low-calorie ice cream that do have ingredients that would fit our lifestyle for when we do need to um, for back, lack of a better word, binge on it so, yeah. or treat ourselves. So right. I do know one thing that I am extremely excited to do while I'm here in St. Louis is go get some Ted Drews. Yeah, so dude. I will be 100% smoking a little bit of cannabis or a lot, allegedly, <laughs> and uh, going to get some Ted Drews. That is, yeah, that's definitely um, always a good thing, dude. Their ice cream is so good or for their sure. custard. Sorry, let, yeah. me, let me get it right, guys. Um, yeah, it's so good, man. But you have to treat yourself to these things every once in a while. Because if you are holding out, like at least from my experience, if you're holding out from something that you do like or that does make you happy, then you're really like 
you're causing suffering and there is so much suffering in the world already to where you know just eat some ice cream and then know that you're not supposed to eat it all the time yeah. there's a great uh aubrey marcus is a great mentor of a lot of people now and he says something that i've resonated with strongly is everything in moderation including that right yeah so you know sometimes go and get some ice cream and go sure, get a lot dude. of it just don't do it all the time oh yeah absolutely um you know and kind of piggybacking off of you know the Aubrey Marcus you know Joe Rogan he's always talking about the 80 20 rule you mm -hmm. know just it doesn't have to be that serious and um and it's actually kind of been shown that whenever you eat and you stress out about it then you start releasing all these stress hormones and whatnot and then you're actually just making it worse mm -hmm. so just just chill it's not it's not going to kill you um yeah like you said everything in moderation including moderation yeah enjoy um, the ice cream you know it's there for it's been there for 100 years for a reason it's cuz it's fucking delicious for sure so. man and if you're doing everything right um you know most of the time that's not going to kill you by any means <laughs> for sure if anything so. it's going to make you happier which overall leads to a better well being for sure <laughs> just for make sure. sure you go work it off the next day if you need to. <laughs> yeah, dude. So speaking of, you know, obviously high quality, quality ingredients, um, you know, you guys at Jumbo, you guys are, are really doing it right with all the right ingredients. Thank you. Yes. Um, so Jumbo Superfoods um, is our company. And when we launched in 2014, we entered an event called the Cannabis Cup, which is put on by High Times Magazine. Mm -hmm. And when we entered one of our products in, it placed. So we got a, an award from the Cannabis Cup and it received the accolade the world's healthiest edibles from High Times, which is a very uh, great accolade to receive from a very well-known cannabis right. magazine. Yeah. So right it was really big for us, and we had to kind of – how it's – I guess we'll start from how Jombo started. Was yeah, let's that, start at the beginning, man. Yeah, Take us back. Jombo started through my friend and our founder, Joe. Joe is a, an amazing person, one of the smartest people I know, and he's very good to himself and the people around him. And one of the things that he was doing was going to yoga and eating well, but still consuming cannabis in a way that in an edible form. And this edible was a Jolly Rancher. And for most people who don't know, Jolly Ranchers are just sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and natural flavoring. Mm -hmm. um, when you consume that with cannabis, you get high from it. However, it's not the best thing to consume with cannabis. Um, so that's what, what, is it, what we call a, like a nice yoga download to where one of the messages he got while in yoga was that he needed to make an edible that fit within his lifestyle right. because he could, everything was kind of going in and matching up except for his cannabis use. So he thought to get an old recipe that he'd used, which was almond butter, cashews, Himalayan salt, natural or local honey, and uh, cannabis infused with MCT oil and we made a little almond butter style nugget or truffle and it was super delicious we had um, it was 25 or 50 milligrams per truffle which is a pretty strong dose for most people who don't know it's a we'll kind of get into dosing a little bit later but um, with that we placed it into the cannabis cup one and that was our truffle so it was a lab tested so you knew how much you were getting in mm -hmm. a bite and so you could trust that every time you ate a jumbo it would be like the jumbo experience yeah and that's kind of what we had curated with our um oils so we used like you said high net all great ingredients like high cr pr organic products mm -hmm. with high quality fats like mct oil or butter or, or fats from nuts yeah coconut yeah. oil yeah you guys are using like high quality essential oils mm -hmm. um everything's organic um, I guarantee, like, you mean you guys know the sources. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So, yeah, man. Like, you guys are just doing everything right. So so what was, like, the R&D process um, for that for that first product? Um, how, I mean, how long did it take you guys to develop that? Because, um, I mean, you guys obviously hit it out the park right out the gate. So this is kind of the crazy part about this is that Joe had the idea, had the label printed, the product in a package and sitting on a cannabis sh a shelf in a dispensary within seven days. Oh, wow. So after someone had purchased it from Joe and then I was sitting on a uh, a shelf, it was basically proof of concept. There yeah. was no nece really other healthy edibles in the cannabis market in Los Angeles. And for people who don't know, it's a large legal cannabis market. In 2014, it was still medical, but there were at least th hundreds or at least thousands of these dispensaries throughout California, so it was strong. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, my uh, Joe, and we also have another business called Give Me the Dirt, which is all-natural oral care uh, with his, our other partner, Shannon. She's a magical woman, and so th they were kind of streamlining that. It was going well. Jumbo was kind of fluttering, and it was 
didn't know what was next. And my friend and jo- uh, my partner, Jordan, who has our beard, he, <laughs> he might have met him at Yeah, Paleo. I saw him at Paleo. He, him and I came on as we were working from the cannabis space. Him and I were managing a dispensary in uh, Hollywood. And we had tried this edible from our friend and our yoga instructor, Kamala and Siri, who was like, my friend has this company. You have to try this product. And it was in the middle of our shift at this uh, dispensary. And normally we would like not eat an edible during work. Mm -hmm. It was one of those days. You know, sometimes you just got to. Yep. We got, we received the sacrament from this, our magical yoga teacher who said that her friend has this company. They gave you, both Jordan and I won. We said, all right, let's eat it. It was about 3 p.m. We were going to be working until 8. Within four, 45 minutes to an hour, we looked at each other. We both had glazed eyes, but we both had the biggest and happiest smile on our faces. Oh, nice. And we were so happy and energized and just laughing. And it was literally one of the best edible experiences to date that I've ever had. So that triggered us to be like, okay, we need to be introduced to Joe to see like, we this isn't out. Like we got to make sure that this is out yeah. and working and the people need to have this. So mm-hmm. we basically went and met Joe and if we can fast forward four years to or five years to now, we're launching into <laughs> grocery stores throughout the nation. We're in over a hundred dispensaries in California and, uh, Cannabis is now legal in the state of California to where yes. anyone in the world who is over 21 can fly into California or Los Angeles, where I recommend, um, and pick up a Jumbo Superfoods product on the shelf at a dispensary. Yeah, I mean, that's so awesome. I mean, you're providing a you know, high-quality product that you know, helps, gosh, countless numbers of people. Yeah. I mean, you have, one, you, know, you, have, you have a plant which can treat a number of ailments – and it's just one thing you don't need you don't need 10 different medications to treat one ailment it's it's crazy yeah and it's it's really powerful and especially we can like speaking with CBD and hemp and what I'm finding out and what more people are finding out is that it's more like an adaptogenic herb to where it's going to where it needs to be the most and mm-hmm. it's bringing your body back to homeostasis and like you're using a topical and then we just kind of have a spray which is our most popular product is an MCT oil based spray with either their cinnamon or mint essential oils um, and then a little bit of hexane-free stevia extract to where it's a nice, sweet, delicious experience without any sugar or bullshit, and it's all high-quality, full-spectrum hemp oil, and you're able to get one milligram per spray and know your dose and not be high from it, but ex- get extreme benefits from the plant, whether it's relaxations, a calmness, some energy, focus. That's kind of where the adaptogenic place is because it's gonna go what you need to most. Yeah, man, and um, and folks, um, you got you got to try this stuff. I tried this. Um, I went and trained jujitsu um, before recording this, and I like I said, I used the muscle balm, but this stuff is amazing. There's no like film or aftertaste that's just lingering. It tastes bad. It just tastes amazing. Um, this has cinnamon, um, which is an anti-inflammatory. Um, I, I feel great after training, and, and I fought um, for nine years, and, um, you know, I retired last year, and just, I'm doing just jujitsu now, um, but, man, like, there's still the wear and tear of all those years of training, of the hard training, and after jujitsu, um, I can just tell you, like, it's CBD alone, I mean, what we know about um, the endocannabinoid system is, is, is one of the, like, original systems, like, within the human body. You know, there are over 60 um, identifiable cannabinoids that can be extracted from, you know, from the cannabis plant. And we're only really just kind of touching the surface of, of what this plant can do. Um, just CBD alone, man, is just such an amazing thing. Yeah, it's, it's great. And then it's, it's even more, it's, uh, it's even mo better that it's now available for people across the nation. Yes. And that they can get it. And it's, if it's not a Jumbo Superfoods product, I do recommend trying a CBD product in general just to try it. And hopefully that CBD is a full spectrum hemp oil. And hopefully it's paired with a high quality fat such as MCT oil or coconut or olive oil. Um, olive oil will have a flavor, but again, it's just a nice high quality fat that your body is going to absorb because uh, cannabis is a fat or the, the molecules like cannabidiol or tetrahydrocannabidiol, THC, Mm -hmm. CBD, CBN Mm -hmm. are all fat soluble right? to where they pair best with fat. Exactly. Yeah. So you definitely want to get a high quality fat with that. 
um, something that hasn't been, you know, compromised with heat, you know, mm-hmm. different things like that. But, um, you know, you, you, you mentioned a lot of the fats. Um, so you started with, with the one nugget, but you guys have a whole line now. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. You we do it. have a full line now. It, de- it never stops. It's, it's like an ongoing joke. It's like the best, funniest joke that we have with ourselves is that the line never stops no, growing. No, it just keeps growing. And each, each product does have its own cannabinoid attached to it to where if like our, our spray, like I'm holding here, we're sitting in, I'm holding a THC spray that's cinnamon. It's the same exact ingredients as the CBD spray, except for the molecules are going to be different. We ex- do different extraction processes. So we've just infused the CBD with uh, the, the, CB, or the, or the MCT oil, and then we make our own THC extraction from like a solventless extraction mm-hmm. to where, yeah, the product line that we have, we st- uh, no longer have those uh, uh, honey buns is what we call them. Yeah. We're reformulating them into the same style, but uh, a different different application. So be on the lookout for that. But we'll kind of go and do our line. We have our breath sprays or sublingual sprays they mm-hmm. are super delicious they're all either coconut oil based flavored with mint or cinnamon and some hexane free stevia what we made these for specifically was that our moms were using our products and they were getting a little too high and we wanted something where they were able to get something <laughs> well it's, i'll kind of extrapolate on that because it's, mm-hmm. it is really funny but it's also kind of like sad at the not sad at the same time but confusing for yourself because you want to make a product that your mom would be able to use right and they were loving the honey buns, but they weren't able to know essentially how much they needed. And they were like getting too high and then kind of, we didn't want to turn them off of our, of our, of the stuff that we're making. So we have these breath sprays, which are a microdose application to where we have one that is one milligram per spray, three milligrams per spray, or six milligrams per spray, depending on the bottle. So the one that I have here is our strongest bottle. It is a thousand milligrams in the bottle and six milligrams per spray. So again, like this is where we can talk about dosing. Um, the average adult threshold for THC is anywhere between two to six milligrams. Okay. So for the person who has never used it before, I would say start with our 200 milligram bottle. Right. It's going to be one milligram per spray. Yes. So you can know your threshold. However, for people like Joe Rogan, who has used our products and talks about it, he sprays like four or five sprays of the six milligrams, and that is right around 30 milligrams, to which you'll probably feel an effect off 30 milligrams. Yeah, you're Um, probably feeling pretty good. You're feeling pretty good. And with the sublingual application, it's going to absorb in your mouth at a way more rapid onset within 15 to 45 minutes. And then the MCT oil is going to help the cannabinoids break the blood-brain barrier faster, Mm -hmm. so it's not going to process through your liver. And what we do is we already activate the THC from THCA to uh, Delta 9 THC, which is the very psychoactive form of it. Okay. And you're spraying it into your mouth and that already uh, decarboxylated is what they like to call it matter. So it's, this bottle is very magical is what we like to call it. Even on our, our side, it says caution, you are holding magic. So we like to have people be responsible and know their dose and do fun things when they're, uh, you know, consuming this plant. Like, you know, like say, we say, like, go make some music, some love, some friends. Go do yoga. Go stretch. Go ride your bike. Go, go, go look outside. Go dance around. Just go be yourself. Don't watch the news. Don't do bullshit that's not fun that's going to put you in a shitty space in your head. Yeah, man. That's what we like to do. Just go be good to yourself. This plant is normally on your side. For real, man. I mean, just so many people should just really just take the time to take care of themselves. Like, you're just sucking in negativity all day. Totally. Like, just quit looking at the screen. Like, who cares what's on CNN or whatever news station you're watching? Like, just go get in nature and just, like, have some self-love, dude. Yep. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta love yourself. So, passing on from our potions and that are both in THC and CBD, we have another product called our Daily Ritual which is uh, ghee from grass-fed cows, right. MCT oil from coconuts, and the either the molecule CBD or THC. CBD will be available to all of your listeners who are listening outside of California, and then THC can be available in certain dispensaries in California. So the benefit of that is we've chose ghee from grass-fed cows, MCT oil, so you... Uh, can put it into your coffee or any type of mix to make your own edibles. Again, like that's kind of our recipe for like a buttered coffee. Mm-hmm. Blend it up, enjoy it, have a nice time. Yeah, no, I saw you guys had the um, 
you guys had like the coffee packages. Mm-hmm. Um, you had like the ghee and like you had the spray and like a mug. Yep. Um, yeah, you had like the whole setup going. Yep. If you go on to jumbosuperfoods.com, you can get the coffee pack, which is a nice uh, Jumbo Superfoods yoga coffee weed mug, some grass fed ghee, and then some coffee from our friends at Caveman Coffee. They make some really great coffee, and you yeah. can get all that in a nice little bundle sent directly to you. Nice, nice. So, do you guys also um, do you sell your THC products in, like any other legal markets, or is it just California legal yeah, market? Currently, right now? at the moment, we are only existing in the California market. Okay. Um, it takes a lot to exist in any market. I bet. And currently, now that cannabis has been legal since January first for people to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of regulations and things to follow and a lot of licensing and rules and testing that uh, each company is now going through. Right. And th- this is like a, it can be a whole different podcast talking about the regulations of the plant, but it's good. They've put like a dosing to where um, edibles have to be maximum dosed at 10 milligrams. Um, everything's lab tested to where you can see the microbes, the pesticides and the potency, which is great because mm-hmm. you know what you're getting. And, um, everything has to be in child resistant packaging and right. track and trace through the state to where you can basically what they like to call it is from seed to shelf. Yeah. And it's a very, uh, robust and technical system that people are still figuring out in California. Um, but it's really awesome that it's now legal and in the eyes of the federal government, a Schedule One narcotic is being distributed legally in the state of California, which is um, awesome. I think it's great. Yeah. It's, and in my personal opinion, it doesn't deserve that Schedule One tout. But shaking my fist at the government, it is now able to be distributed legally. So. Yeah, yeah. And folks, and for the folks that don't know, um, a Schedule One narcotic. Um, under those guidelines, it states that um, those substances have no um, medical usage yeah, no at all. No medical benefit, not yeah. one bit. And even CBD is uh, classified as Schedule One, so um, it's pretty funny. Yeah. And so the proof is in the pudding. However, the government doesn't like pudding. It. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so yeah, that kind of leads into what I was, uh, what I wanted to ask, and which is, so I, so you have to go through the testing to to verify the dosage and kind of and everything as far as what you're putting out. But how do you guys control that? Like, how do you know like what you're putting in there? Like, how do you control like you know, is it one milligram, six milligrams, twenty five milligrams? Like, how do you control that like in the development process? So in the development process, what we'd have to do is we'd make our our uh, extraction, and then we would take that solution and then send it to the lab, okay. and then we would know what our oil concentration is, okay. and then from then we would be able to punch it into our recipe and our algorithm to know what was needed. We have, my production manager Brendan is a. Uh, is a real, real wizard when it comes to getting that stuff down. We've got a lot of magical people on our team, yeah. and he is one of them, and he's able to really just make it happen. He's always kind of been on point, and all of our products have come up clean and really consistent to where he'll have a batch where he likes to just, like, I think it'll be right on the money, and he'll send it in, and it's right on the money. It's like, yeah. He's really good. We like to put some good intentions and like bless each batch. And yeah. Every, yeah, he can just feel it now. He can just feel it. He's like, no, it's good. I can, yeah, I just I got good vibes with this one. And it's good. It's it's slightly cocky, slightly arrogant, but definitely spot on. It's working, And man. it's working, so kudos to him. It's been a great time working with him. Great, great. So what else? All right, so we got the ghee. We got the sprays. We got the sprays, the ghee, and then we just are launching a couple new products that you were able to try. It was right. the bomb. The we have bomb. a bomb. That These are is, amazing. Thank you. It's cocoa butter, ghee from grass-fed cows, MCT oil. Um, the essential oil blend, and mm-hmm. then a bunch of uh, full spectrum hemp oil. Yeah. So and it's been the, one of my favorite products. I'm extremely excited about it. It's been just a, a f- super awesome. We launched it last month. We've been wanting to do this for quite a long time, and it's here. It's working. People love it, and they're, they're benefiting from it, which is the best thing. Like it can sit on the shelf and not work, and then we've failed right. essentially. Um, but people are benefiting from it, which is like okay, awesome. This is great. A lot of people are like wishy-washy on the CBD c- comparing it to snake oil. Yeah. And it's really great when people are benefiting from our products and we don't have to be like really f- – like it's, I promise it works. Yeah. I mean I can tell you for me, dude, it was right on time. Like you know, I was sitting there talking to you. You're like, oh, man, we just released this. And then 
I got some and like the next morning I woke up and um you know sometimes after you compete like you just you, things happen you don't know it like in the moment but like the next day you feel it mm -hmm. and dude my hands were just so stiff and so sore and um I put it on my knuckles and like I just immediately started loosening up dude I'm yeah. just like oh, oh yes that's so awesome yeah so we're really excited about this product it is a uh... Yeah, we're actually launching it into more retail accounts um, starting on June 11th, and it's going to be very great. And then another product that we are just releasing are our CBD drops, which are in a delineated dropper. It's just MCT oil, mm -hmm. full-spectrum hemp oil, and a little bit of rosemary extract for preservative. Um, it's very the plain Jane in the sense where there's no flavoring, no nothing. It's just a nice dropper to where people are able to get 5 milligrams per milliliter. And then we're also releasing... a uh, drops for your pet as oh, well nice. so we're they're gonna some cbd drops for uh animals so. yeah and dude the drops are great i got to try some of those um while i was at the expo you gave me some and um and it can really benefit so many people um so my daughter addison she um she was actually diagnosed on the autism spectrum um it's a huge spectrum so some some cases are you know real severe some not so much you know they say like if you've met one person with autism you've met one person with autism because no two cases are really the same um so for her she's not very severe and sometimes like you talk to her um and you know you wouldn't even know that she's on the skit like on the spectrum but with that being said what we know that cbd um there's so many benefits like for the brain and, and like inflammation and it's been shown to help with with cases such as like autism and um um, like people who have like uh, seizures, um, there's just so many benefits. You know, MS, like mm -hmm. just the drops alone, you know, take them right under the tongue. Um, like you said, uh, digestion starts in the mouth, so you're going to have a quick absorption. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, it is really awesome. I actually, um, like that story kind of holds closer to me as well to where I've always – thought like you like the you say like the autism spectrum it is so large to where it's like okay like should it even be described as like the autism spectrum yeah and you, i've learned don't even so know. much about it through the last couple of years because um one of my partners she works direct uh work she's a skills trainer for children with autism and i hear the things that she does and the, just like some of the cases and how different they are mm -hmm. and then some of the parents are treating their children with the uh hemp oil and they're kind of calming down and i have my own little theory about it that doesn't necessarily attach itself to jumbo superfoods is that um people on the spectrum they have a very active uh, actively senses they're just mm -hmm. seeing everything feeling everything their brain is just feeling all of these different frequencies at mm -hmm. such a rapid rate mm -hmm. to where when these potential C cannabinoids come into their body it literally like s slows just down the chatter whatever that word means right now in yeah. their brain to where they're able to just, you know, necessarily maybe soak in a moment, breathe yeah. rather than just have all this sensory coming in and just being completely stimulated by whether it's their internal or external thoughts. So I could, I could totally see that. Um, I mean, cause it does, it does really can kind of calm you down. And we know, like I said, we have these receptors that are just built for that. Um, so it could totally just, just be filling that void. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really, really uh, great thing, and I mean, again, each parent will have to try it for themselves. But it's something that I have another little thing is that people like these ailments have potentially developed over the years. Um, like humans and the plant have been growing together for since the beginning of time. Um, I recommend your audience or you listening to or w reading this book called Smoke Signals, and it's a social history about the cannabis plant in okay. general. And we, we've been growing with this plant for so long. And within like literally the last hundred years, we've kind of stopped based on uh, uh, Hearst putting a ban against it from his papers. And then like the smoking weed will make uh, blacks and Mexicans fuck white people. It's like, no, come on, dude. Yeah. Who are you trying to trick? So there was a bunch of big negative propaganda towards the plant in general, including hemp. Mm -hmm. And then hemp was in everyone's diet for so long. And I, I believe that humans are just now at a cannabinoid deficiency and that maybe now that we're consuming hemp or n during the deficiency all of these ailments started to come up such as like cancers and the spectrum that people I mean, this it's probably it's always been there yeah but now maybe it's just larger and we're coming to light um yeah. and now that hemp is coming into more people's diets and whatever weed or marijuana or cannabis in general is becoming more accepted people are using it 
and seeing that it's helping those mm-hmm. ailments, maybe like what we said from the beginning, bringing your body back to homeostasis. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, because, I mean, the body's always searching for homeostasis. Um, so if we create those conditions, then, you know, only good things can happen. And uh, so for the folks that don't know, um, William Randolph Hearst, he was a, you know, a very prolific businessman, um, what, back in the 20s? Yeah, the tw- I mean, tw- 20s. The early, the early part of the 19th century. Yeah, <laughs> let's just go with that. In the yeah. 1930s and after the Depression. Yeah, yeah. So, his, you know, he had a, a newspaper and several yeah. businesses, and he had, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of stake and, and, and timber and forests. And um, there was an invention called the Decorticator, which, you know, had, had come out. And what it was going to do, it, it, it made it so much easier and efficient to harvest hemp. Um, which, you know, would have essentially put him out of business. It would have kind of ruined him all his papers. Paper and let the trees grow, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, (laughs) he he had all of this stock and paper. We need to cut down those trees so we can have all of our paper. Um, You know, never mind that hemp is a superior um, fiber that actually restores the the soil that it's grown in and and all of these good things. But, yeah, so he lobbied hard, and, and there was a lot of political propaganda that came up, and, you know, we started calling cannabis marijuana because yeah. that's what, you know, the, the blacks and the dirty Mexicans, you know, that's what they smoked. And like you said, dude, they're going to be with, you know, they're going to fuck the white women. Yep. And, and we can't have that. So we got to start, you know, banning this drug. Um, you know, it, it was listed in, in the original, uh, was it pharmacopoeia or pharmacological? I don't know. I'm, I'm using the wrong word. Yeah. But it was prescribed all for years and years and years and then we had this propaganda so you combine it with him and then um i don't know why i'm blanking on the name but there was a like an fbi agent kind of around that time yeah anslinger yeah harry yeah harry anslinger so you know you kind of you have the perfect fucking storm with those two and here we are today money and power teamed together and then just boom the plant is no longer allowed and that was in 1937 so it's been now coming back to life and more people are able to consume it and like yeah you said it was i think it's pharmacopoeia pharmacopoeia and it's great when i was in austin the the weekend that i met you we have a pharmacy that carries our product called austin compounding pharmacy if you're in austin please go check them out and ask to see this book which is a old pharmacologist book from like the early 1900s yeah. and everything was written out in these prescriptions and she was showing us these prescriptions and yes it had cannabis and hemp and, and opium and cocaine <laughs> and a bunch of these things yeah. so she was like yeah this is in the old pharmacies so yeah all the time people were rocking <laughs> yeah dude i mean they knew they knew like, yeah this it was... was helping like in there's like hieroglyphs of ancient ancient civilizations with the plant and like all around the world um yeah cannabis has grown just differently and produced the different cannabinoids literally just where it's grown Mm -hmm. so in like india like in afghani that's where the afghan goes and it's like more of like the uh um, euphoric high and mm-hmm. like the yogis in India were smoking hashish which is very high concentrated in THC Yeah, and then you get to like northern Europe where hemp is growing more and people were probably smoking and benefiting from the CBD which is non-psychoactive Right. and then there's all of our parents like, I mean I'm 29 and I know that my, my parents growing up they were like oh the weed was definitely not as strong as it was now and that's because they were more than likely well they were from St. Louis and then probably getting weed that was either uh, brought in from some type of Mexico or yeah. South America, mm-hmm. which is normally hemp or yeah. very low uh, quality uh, THC. So right. they're just able to smoke all of this stuff and feel that CBD high that they love so much. And then all of a sudden now uh, they've literally genetically modified weed to be able to produce up to 29% THC. And, and that will cause some extreme psychoactivity. That is a different feeling. Yeah. And not I, to mention they were probably smoking bugs and yeah, all and this stuff. It's just like fungus. Technology and, is just so crazy now with just this cannabis. Like I'm holding a tin can right now that looks like a uh, chew container, and in this can is an eighth of weed that was nitrogen pressed, and you're able to just get it like this on the shelves now. So it's really evolved from. Uh, getting it off a plane or off the back of a truck um it has just it's a true industry and yeah. it's a it's powerful to be a part in yeah like I, after being in it and so close to the plant for the last 10 years in my life and 
I can't necessarily see myself doing much other things um, other than starting businesses or working next to the plant. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a really fun thing. It's helped me. It's helped a lot of people in my life. Um, and now I'm able to uh, hopefully one day support a family and grow a family with this plant. So. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's funny that you mentioned, um, you know, you, you feel that we have like, a, you know, a, a cannabinoid deficiency because I feel like, a lot of things, a lot of ailments today kind of go back to like they're like autoimmune disorders. Like we're just mm -hmm. deficient in a lot of things. We're not moving. We're not getting these nutrients that we're needing. We're getting all of these, um, this, all these processed foods and, you know, just all this junk. Yeah. And it's just all, and it just messes up your gut and you start having all this inflammation and it just, it's just, uh, all of these things are just related to autoimmune problems. And if you clean up your gut, and you start getting the nutrients that you need, then we're back in homeostasis, right? Yep. Just bring it as close. Like to be as close as you can. Yeah, so, man. You know, be good to yourself. Um, you know, yeah, go outside, do some yoga, go lift a weight, lift something heavy, like go on a jog, like go run up some sand hills, go choke someone out, hopefully. Like, Dude, just Hopefully do it's like a consensual choke out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like just go, go move. Go try a plant. I mean, just go – Go try to be better than you were yesterday. Really. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so we we know of you know THC, right? Uh, we know of CBD. You know we have cannabinol, tetrahydrocannabinol, or cannabidiol. Is that what? Cannabidiol. Can, 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 it's cannabidiol. Like, it's like a tomato, tomato, C cannabidiol, cannabidiol. Yeah. So I messed like that a, one up. But we also know about CBN, cannabinol, which. Oh yeah. um, what we've been has been shown. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, it can aid in, in sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, it typically so if you have like the flower, the more exposed it is to oxygen, it typically kind of causes like um, the re the release of CBN. Mm -hmm. um, so it increases kind of the longer you have it sitting on the shelf and whatnot. Yep. Which why you get super sleepy. Super sleepy. Um, yeah. A lot of people are are really benefiting from the like, CBN and being able to fall asleep. Uh, there are actually THC products we can act if we we can make them a way to where they do produce a, a higher concentration of CBN in the final products to where it does have a nice concentration of that and then another one of my new favorite molecules is THCV which is known to help appetite uh, like an appetite uh, oh, suppressant really yeah so and like a weight loss kind of thing. Oh, so that's I've been cool. kind of jumping in more on like different cannabinoids. Like there's CBG, CBDA, which is just unactivated CBD. Oh. There's THCA, which is again a non psychoactive THC molecule. Um, and then one, yeah. So there's so many different molecules. So much to learn. Yeah, and, man. Just the the future is really bright. Oh, it's um, so cool. So are you guys doing anything with just kind of like CBN isolated products there? Is that maybe something that you kind of see in the future for the just the market in general, or or yeah. maybe like some sort of mix, like a CBN and um, uh, oh gosh, I don't know why I'm blanking all of a sudden, um, like a serotonin or something. So that's kind of going to be the stuff that we're going to be playing around with next. Being able to extract different molecules um, is tough as CBD and THC at this current present are the most abundant in the way that the plant is grown now. Where well, there are certain strains that are able to produce these different cannabinoids more efficiently. However, those strains haven't been mass produced yet. There's these really, what I like to refer to as just Jedi growers, just these master growers that yeah. just know the plant so well and are able to crossbreed and breed these plants so many different times to where they're literally able to get them to produce what they want to produce and those master growers are working on uh getting those plants i don't know too many of them a lot like what you've seen recently i guess in like like the last 30 years is a very high concentration of thc and yeah. that's still very popular mm -hmm. is that people want to see kind of how much C thc they can produce but within the last four years you're seeing this huge cbd uh, D shift yeah. where more plants are being produced with CBD and you're mm -hmm. seeing way higher concentration or really awesome ratios like two to one CBD to THC mm -hmm. to where, um, yeah, you can smoke this, uh, herb or try this con edible or concentration to where you can get like the nice benefits of the THC and still feel like a small buzz, but the nice floatiness of maybe the CBD, yeah. probably not the best way to describe it, but, um, it's very fun, uh, fun way to consume these different, uh, 
plants. Like I think, and that's and I, I say fun in this way is that I, I don't, I want you to consume cannabis or entheogens in the way that you're going to consume them. Whether you're doing them intentionally, hopefully that intention is has a medical benefit, or maybe you just want to you do it to get high. Yeah, and try it out. Like. I just, as long as you're holding that intention, it's okay to feel this great euphoric effect from this THC. Um, it's basically a side effect that a lot of people can enjoy mm-hmm. or not enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not for everyone, and I don't recommend it for everyone. But yeah. at times, for me, it's a very fun uh, plant to consume and feel a euphoric effect from and something like drop into my body a little bit easier yeah maybe go into meditation or go to the gym and like be like oh man my muscle feels a little bit different over there maybe i should do that or move around i'm sure i know the jujitsu community in los angeles has a lot of people smoking weed before they roll i know my friend just started smoking or going there and he's like yeah you can basically smell everyone's sweat out the weed i'm like <laughs> that sounds like 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, man. Just just get real chill and, and go roll and just uh, have a good time. Um, there's actually a tournament. I think it's like this weekend in California. It's brand new. It's called High Rollers BJJ. Oh. It's like a cannabis tournament. Like I think the Diaz <laughs> brothers are going to be there and wow. like all these people. Um, yeah, so they're, I mean, they're just bringing it to the forefront. Like it's yeah. in the culture. It's um, definitely in the culture. We have a lot of Jiu-Jitsu practitioners using our products. And I guess you're, I mean, you're one of them. We have a lot of people using our products, which is great. It goes, I recommend doing something like jujitsu, which is basically chess with your body. (laughs) Yeah. Or yoga, right? I mean, yoga. Yeah. Go lift a weight, do a kettlebell flow. Or I recently uh, did a two day steel mace workshop with Leo, uh, Leo Savage. Did you? And it was one of the coolest things I've ever, uh, got to experience. I've swung the mace before. And for people who don't know, mace is a ancient weapon that in this instant we're using as an exercise flow tool and it has a nice maybe a yard long and a nice 10 a ball on the end and Mm -hmm. that's about a 10 pound instrument and you're able to swing it and it's a great core and upper shoulders workout and even your legs we're getting into all these squat differences Mm -hmm. and for people who don't know who i'm talking about you can follow leo savage on instagram at at leo savage and learn some of his really awesome mace flows he is a great person who can swing the mace and i learned a lot of things um thankful for him to let me attend that one but yeah it's a really cool works out your body and uh it really you're able to you know Find a nice flow as in jujitsu or yoga or Yeah, dude, just just move your body, just get in get in connection with your body. Um yeah, like you said, dude, the mace is awesome for all the a lot of shoulder mobility work. Yes. Um yeah, Leo Savage, follow him on Instagram, do I check him out? He has a lot of good flows. Um and I was hoping to get him on the podcast when I'm gonna be down in Austin, but it'll be in Dallas. Uh, uh so yeah. We, yeah, we couldn't coordinate it, but like I said, I'll have Essek on. Um mm-hmm. that'd be cool. For you guys who don't know, um Essek is the um, he's the head. He's a senior um, steel mace guy at On It, uh, steel mace coach. So uh, be look out for that. But yeah, dude, they're just just all these unconventional training things that you could be doing. Just uh, yeah, dude, just just move your body, get in touch with your body. Yeah, I grew up um, doing a lot of different, you know, traditional athletics: football, baseball, basketball, wrestling. And then I, my football coach, taught us Olympic lifting. And then for a while, we were doing Olympic lifting and then traditional like bodybuilding. And then once I started like swinging a kettlebell when I was like 21, I was like, oh, yeah, this is fun. Yeah, like this is different, and I'm not sitting on a bench bored in between sets. Like I'm getting a very high cardiovascular workout, and then I can literally feel myself getting stronger. Yeah. Like, and, like, and then what's the fun part is you can swing kettlebells for as long as you want, and then you can go in and see an improvement in all these other tra- more traditional style of workouts. For sure. It's a very you just kind of get an overall strength. Yeah, yeah, no, so, yeah, it's just all good, man. Just move the body, um, you know, give it what it needs, and you'll be fine. You know, yep. it's kind of what it boils down to. Um, so what, uh, what, what's your favorite way to, uh, to consume? Um, obviously, there's so many different, different methods. Um, or is it just, just dependent on the day, how you're feeling? It kind of depends on the day, but if it's the normal day, my favorite way to consume cannabis is the flour or um, – through a nice bo- a bong and a bong is like a water pipe it's a nice little water percolated smoking device where the uh, water filters out the smoke mm-hmm. and that's my favorite way to consume if not it's definitely um 
through our THC sprays. Yeah. Those are really fun, easy yeah. to travel. It's fun to go outside and use and like be out in public because you're able to use it and not have a nice big cloud of smoke and anything. Yeah. You have a nice fresh breath. But if any, I like to do, you know, I I participate. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just, just say that. Just, just whatever, I, is... I, whatever is convenient. I don't necessarily like to be high 24-7 because – Sometimes it doesn't make me the best version of myself. Yeah. Um. But when I do like to just go and I have a nice get high with my friends, like do do whatever's clever and just have a good time. Yeah. Go laugh. Go out. Walk to the beach. Go play in the ocean. Um. Yeah. Go go look at some fun art. I'm lucky. I live in Los Angeles now, to where there's a lot available to just go be in. And I've lived there for almost seven years now. And it's still something new every day. Yeah. Just being from a small, small old South City kid to moving out to Oregon and now in California, it's just a complete uh, fun time. Yeah, yeah. And probably just different energy, right? Just everywhere you go. I mean, absolutely. You can totally just feel like the pulse of some places when you go there. Totally. It's exactly what you're saying. There's a total different energy in St. Louis and there's. Like you, we go out and just people have a nice different smile and they're it's a smaller community. It feels like a community almost now that I'm here and people are looking at you, have, have saying hi. L.A., you don't necessarily get as much of that yeah. just because there's so many people. And then Oregon, it's definitely community-based. We know everybody. Everyone knows you. Mm-hmm. And, it, yeah, it's just a nice – the world is large. However, it's not as big as everyone thinks and it's a really fun place, so I recommend go seeing different parts of it. For sure, it's, for sure. It's a really fun place, so go check it out. Yeah, dude, I got to make my way out there. Um, it's the weirdest thing. Like I said, I'm from Missouri. I've been here forever, and um, people always ask me if I'm, from, if, like, if I'm from California. I don't know if I just give that vibe because I'm just so chill and mellow. And, Perfect. But I was like, no, I'm not from here, but it works out. Yeah. It works out. Um, so, dude, let me ask you this. Um, so we have – you know, there's different strains. Um, you know, typically we have, you know, you have your sativas come um, kind of thought of as, you know, your uppers, your cerebral highs, um, really kind of in your head. You have your indicas, um, usually thought of, um, kind of more of an evening type of strain. You know, you usually get a real, real deep body high, um, and, cor- you know, add and correct me, but, um, and you have, you have a lot of hybrids. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I read this article one time and it was talking about like those, those are what we kind of tend to call those. But like if we actually based the names off of like the regions where these strains come from, that would be incorrect. Have you read that? Absolutely. And I think what we're kind of getting at here in life is that there isn't such thing as indica sativa hybrid is that there is like that's kind of like they're going to be cannabis indica, cannabis ruderalis, cannabis yeah. sativa, and I and then um, there's yeah there's so many different things and what they're finding out is what you're kind of saying is that Jack Herrera is probably going to be different than a, ja- a Jack Herrera, yeah. but these what we're smoking is terpene profiles yeah. and cannabinoid profiles, yeah. and these are the cannabinoid profiles that are interacting with our endocannabinoid system that is going to give us this thing. Like a good example is a, you could go into a dispensary and there's a strain called like, uh, more like a haze strain, we'll call it. And that'll Mm -hmm. be in like the sativa section, but a haze, at least the way it interacts with my body is it would feel like what an indica could feel like to where it's more of like I'm on the couch and not necessarily motivated to do much. And then there are certain indica strains that maybe I feel more like relaxed but I'm more like clear in my head. Mm-hmm. And then there are those, what would like would be sativa strains that have like a very high fruity uh, terpenes or a smell. And then they are going to give you more energy. Yeah. And, like, so like a good instance is like the Jack Herrera or like a green crack. And for people who don't know, there's just different cannabis strains. Right. And you're able to get these more energetic or focused effects from these strains. So uh, that's why they're, crossbreeding all these plants and then that's where like the hybrid comes in right to where you can necessarily you can really crossbreed two indica plants that's just me a hybrid indica so yeah right everything's right. essentially a hybrid but there's what they're finding out now and what's cool about this legalization thing is that they're finding the terpene profiles or what it is affecting our body more than like the and that well that's what the plan is essentially 
yeah. smell, the taste, like the, mm-hmm. the the whole plant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's this whole molecular, you know, makeup, and and just kind of how we it's just we just naturally, you know, we just naturally can use it and it benefits us. Um, yeah. So I think that that article was also so kind of what it was saying was like so what we would typically call like a sativa. What what it really should be is like um, like it should be like uh, it shouldn't be sativa. It should be like cannabis Afghani or something yeah. because like that's where all sativas kind of like originated from. Like if we it, I think they're just talking like from the scientific root word. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, you make a great point. I mean, there's a like there all these hybrids. I mean, you just there's there's no just kind of like one strain. Yeah, it's it's a. And that's kind of what I learned because I was able to like work next to the plant and grow it for a little bit. And that's what I, and if I, anything like a sativa is going to be more like taller and produce maybe some fatter nugs um, or colas. And then the indica plants are going to be more shorter and fatter and maybe not as abundant in the final product. So yeah, it's a really yeah, that this plant is a wild. You once you, yeah. once you just grow any plant, like start with tomatoes, start yeah. with some aloe vera or something. Yeah, dude, just plants in general. Um, so have you experimented with any other like plant medicines? Yes, I have. Um, I have experimented with a a diff- good different amount. So one of my favorites that I've recently experienced would be wachuma. Wachuma. Yeah, and wachuma is an a San Pedro cactus extract, which is is a, I guess for people who don't know mescaline. Mescaline. Yes, okay. and you're able to drink it, and it gives you a, a great. It's called the grandfather medicine, and this is a very comforting medicine, like a lot of grandfathers can be, and it kind of guides you, and it, kind of getting a little wooey now, but it opens up your heart chakra, okay. and you're able to kind of feel a love. And for people who have maybe done ecstasy, a lot of can people can compare it to like an MDMA ish really? style of feeling. And but it really just kind of helps open love and oh, bring nice. in that type of love, and that's not necessarily too uh, visual stimulating. It's it's very hard to explain after experiencing it. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily recommend it, it people just to go out and drink San Pedro or cactus. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely a, follow your heart. It was in a nice. I was in a nice container led by a shaman with a bunch of people there we all my setting intentions and it was a very profound experience yeah, yeah. dude yeah no setting an intention makes all the difference mm-hmm. you know what i mean and and being around good people and um where you know where you feel safe um yeah that definitely makes a big difference yeah i've never i've never tried that um or mdma but it's supposed to just kind of make you feel so connected and yes. kind of at peace and very empathetic yeah uh, your empathy kind of grows that's what i need yeah it, it, it's nice it kind of just rips open your heart in the best way yeah to where you're able to just kind of love yourself and within that you're able to love everything else yeah that's super cool yeah that's definitely um kind of on the list um i really want to go to peru i talked yes. about this there but and and yeah and, and do ayahuasca mm-hmm. and um because man, there's like a, a retreat you can go down there, and it's like a week long, and you end up doing it like you know several times throughout mm-hmm. the week. Yeah, it's a, a very powerful medicine known as the grandmother medicine. Maybe not as a guide, or I guess guiding. I've never done ayahuasca, so I shouldn't speak on it. I've no, I've read about it. I've done its synthesized form, DMT, um, which is definitely fast not what i believe ayahuasca is like essentially right um, yeah no ayahuasca is supposed to be just so much more just like a nice nice rise and fall it's just real more mellow and drawn out for like four hours but i have done dmt and for the folks that don't know it's dimethyltryptamine um that's naturally occurring in the brain the mm-hmm. pineal gland um, which is why we return back to baseline so quickly yeah um but yeah those experiences um I'm of the belief that you're really going to like it's another place. Um, yeah, potentially. I, yeah, I don't know what what your experience was. For me, the first time I I um, I tried the medicine, I um, it really scared me actually, and I didn't realize why until afterwards. Just like I've always kind of identified 
with the physical like my whole idea of who I am is just the physical what I can see in the mirror and for me it was a rapid onset of like like my body evaporated and like I was still me but I wasn't my physical self and it freaked me the fuck out <laughs> yeah and for a lot of people who don't know there are couple different things of dmt there's the nn dmt and then there's 5meo dmt which com- can come from a frog the, i think it's the bufo alivaris frog and uh definitely two different things where nn dmt and from my perception your ego is kind of still attached to you at some points um you are able to maybe experience an ego death from this uh but from my experiences I had still had my ego attached to me. So I wasn't, I definitely wouldn't say I had had a full breakthrough through it with that specific uh, molecule. Um, but it is very, very um, a powerful thing. Again, with messing with any of these type of substances, I would recommend setting a great intention, being Please. in a place that is safe. Hopefully you're not going to be in trouble to, for doing these things. Yeah. And hopefully you got it from a very trusted source and are doing it with people that you trust as well. So. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely um, take everything I say with a grain of salt, guys. <laughs> um, definitely um, don't do anything you don't want to do, but um, if you do decide to experiment, I'm like Kyle saying, you know, be safe. Uh, make sure that you know where you're getting your things from. You yeah. know, people. And educate with. yourself about the sub. That's what I recommend doing. The biggest, if you're interested in the substance, do some research about For it. For sure. There's a great book called the DM- DMT, the Spirit Molecule, which is about the first clinically t- uh, lab tests DMT uh, experiences um, through Dr. Rick Strassman. I recommend people reading that. There's also an easy to digest documentary about it called the Spirit Molecule. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll put this in show notes too. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of different outlets available for people to watch these things, and yeah, there's so much information now for people talking about their experiences and all of these um, common things that are happening in these experiences. So yeah, definitely do some research and always try to set a good intention before you do any of these very powerful potentially life-changing substances yeah for me really the biggest takeaway is that you know the the power of plants man yes and you know you 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 hear the story of 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 how ayahuasca was kind of you know found if you will and there's millions of combinations that could have been Mm -hmm. put together in in the in the jungle but you know this particular root and this particular plant were put together so now you have now you're able to have this this you know this elixir that allows you to kind of transcend and you know possibly go to this other realm but you hear the shamans tell you and they tell you that the plants told them how to do this yep yeah you know and it's it's crazy um you know i was just talking um to my friend the other day and he was telling me that i need i need to look this up but he's saying that uh, you know they found out that trees have a heartbeat but it takes like two hours for one beat. Wow. Well, that's I, interesting. I know that I have been through different things and different substances. However, this wasn't necessarily a substance other than breath. I was at a Kundalini yoga workshop with Guru Singh, and he's a very, I think he was practicing directly with Yogi Bhajan, who is the yogi who brought traditional kundalini yoga to the west yeah and for people who don't know kundalini yoga is a practice of yoga that stimulates your central nervous system through breath and exercises a kriya of work of of essentially different workouts that stimulate your different chakras and it's very scientific based yoga i don't i wish i've known more of the science about it i'm not a yoga teacher no worries. i've been doing it for the last four years and still kind of feel like i'm brand new to it it's a very powerful thing and through these through breath and movement pranayama and uh meditation you are able to achieve these same potential dmt-ish realms through yoga right and that's where i've had my had some of my most profound yeah. experiences just through maybe a little bit of cannabis and a lot of breath and some and some good kundalini yoga i have some joe who is our founder has this great workshop called sacred savasana he's a kundalini yoga instructor oh. where it combines a uh, tantric yoga kundalini yoga wim hof breath um oh man it's so good it's like yeah. a nice four-hour workshop i recommend seeing that yeah and if you're in los angeles i recommend going to my friends kamala and series they are 
have a class called Yoga Galactica where they pr- different pr- uh, practices of pranayama, meditation, uh, breath work, and stretching poses to uh, really get you to a good place. And nice. Sh- really shift yourself through some breath. So, and if that's what is another thing to take notice, of maybe with all of these different entheogens, is that just know that you can breathe. Yeah. You know, just you are always able to breathe and. If you, Make sure you're breathing in life. Dude. That's the life source. You, you come in life breathing and you leave life breathing. So yeah. So the one thing you always have throughout this life is your breath. So yeah. take notice of that and love it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Breath work is powerful, man. I, and I've, I've done some of the um, like the Wim Hof breathing. Wim I definitely Hof wanna, is a magician. Yeah, sure. man. I, I, would really, I definitely really would like to get into more like the, the Kundalini Yoga and the, and the breath work with that because, you know, like you said, you really can reach these heightened states of awareness um, through breath work, it's it's such a powerful tool. Um, you know, if if you don't have the the patience for that, you know, you definitely have some catalysts you can use. But you can get it through breath work, man. Mm-hmm. It's it's very powerful. So yeah, it that's been one of the most shifting experiences that I've had within the last, I guess, on this journey of last seven years is just just through breath. Yeah, and practicing different pranayama techniques through and then posing, and it's been a, a extremely profound seven years of my life nice. not all ups and all ups and downs and it's all it's all good yeah, we yeah. Do, i'm still alive sitting here on your floor having a great time yeah so it's, oh just good, hell yeah man good seven years hell yeah brother so yeah man it's all a journey um shit man let's uh let's wrap this up how can uh again let's uh how can folks get a hold of you um any plugs you want um, if you're good. interested in Jumbo Superfoods products, I recommend checking out jumbosuperfoods.com. Use the discount code Jumbo Loves You for 15% off your first order. Um, if you're interested, you have Instagram. You can follow in, uh, Jumbo Superfoods on Instagram at, at Jumbo Superfoods. If you're inter- interested in seeing what I'm doing, um, I mean I don't post much, but you can find me at different social medias at Kyle is Brown. Um, yeah, I'm not really a self promoter more kind of promoting the things that me and my friends are doing I, i'll get better at promoting myself one day yeah but until then i just talk about things that i love and i do love myself i shouldn't get it. <laughs> so it's a fun time but yeah follow me have a good time yeah sweet man hey you know it's a it's a journey dude we're all just we're all just uh along for the ride dude, Absolutely. Trying to get it's a good ride we're yeah. we bought the ticket let's take this ride and oh, yeah keep enjoying it so it was a, been a pleasure to meet you. It's been yeah, nice dude. to know that we're cut off, like, cut off the same branch. For sure, dude. Hey, man. You know, thanks for uh, for stopping by and uh, and being on the show, dude. Absolutely, dude. All right, all right, everybody. Peace. Take it easy. All righty then. Man, that was a good time. I really enjoyed talking to Kyle again. Just an amazing human being. Everybody, be sure to check out Jumbo Superfoods. Go to their website again. That's jumbosuperfoods.com. Again, off your first order, you can save 15%. Use the discount code Jumbo Loves You. You will not be disappointed. I fucking love their products. So good. So good. Before I leave you guys with a song, I want to tell all the artists out there, if you have a song that you'd like to have featured on the podcast, you'd like for me to play on the outro track, send it my way. Um, artist bands, I guess bands are artists, right? So everybody, just send me your music. I'll check it out, and we'll get it on the podcast. Email that to me at adam at imposedwill dot com. Again, send the send your music to adam a d a m at imposedwill dot com. That's i m p o s e d w i l l dot com. Uh, so again, send your music there. Uh, last few things, housekeeping wise, everybody, please, please, please subscribe if you aren't. Uh, also, share the podcast. Let's help spread this so everybody can can listen. Uh, and then leave us five star review. Help me out, guys. Let's help grow this thing. And last but not least, I will leave you with a song by Reese Young. Uh, he's actually a good buddy of mine I went to school with back in the day. So check him out. You can find him on iTunes. You can find him on Bandcamp. You can find him on SoundCloud. Um, but uh, look him up. His uh, This is his song off his most recent album uh, on called... Uh, his most recent album called Unlucky Me. 
Uh, this song is called American Made featuring Evan Hoyle. We've been beaten down With our heads bust open We can see it now No opposition We will never fall Open up your eyes and see it We can never feel defeated No, we can never be defeated This flag won't fall away from grace, my dear This flag won't fall away from grace, my dear We fought the battles, won the war What we got was worth fighting for We carry pride in who we are Cause we're American We're American I'm American, I hope they feel it I'm the building block, I'm the cornerstone of every building From the soldiers, mothers, fathers, children, I hope they feel this Coming from the Midwest, we can do without all this killing And this flag right here, my witness heard we live better than most of these people Not saying we better, but we all the same kind of people uh, American made, American me, this for my country uh, Remember them times, remember them nights we had free lunches Some of them nights we just can't stomach, run it with the heads bust open, we can see it now. Lord, ready. No opposition, we will never fall. Never. Open up your eyes and see it. We can never feel defeated. No, we can never be defeated. This flag won't fall away from grace, my dear. This flag. This flag, this flag won't fall away from grace, my dear. Come on. We fought the battles, won the war. Won that. What we got was worth fighting for We carry pride uh, in who we are Cause we're yeah. American We're uh, American This red, right, made. blue, I can't escape it We lost a lot in 9-11 and left us shaking uh, Sad to say, but as a people we came together from black to white, it didn't even matter, we was together Fighting for what we was born to believe in When it's so dark, can't see in But this race is my weakness and I seen it Daily basis and it's basic, I gotta face it Life passed me, that life fell and it was laced out with that hatred And I knew it was, and these race scouts never hesitate to put two in us uh. 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 Open up your eyes and see it We no can friend. never feel defeated No, we can never be defeated <laughs> This flag won't fall away from grace, my dear This flag This flag This flag won't fall away from grace, my dear <laughs> yeah. We fought the battles, won the war won What we got was worth fighting for We carry pride in who we are Cause we're American, we're American made For the red, for the white, for the we're blue We're American made uh, Yeah We're American made Under uh, God We're American right made Let's let this ride out we're American, American made. Me.